I've emphasized what I think is um, helpful for uh, the future development of uh, Guqin skill and uh, you know music expression. Um, <coughs> you know, one thing is um, you know that you know Guqin as an instrument has probably you know the most complicated fingering. Um, and its a fingering is you know um, highlight the um, the way you you get the sound you know how you touch the string um, how you pluck the string and what part of your body uh, touching the string so um, and uh, you know especially when you know teaching someone who uh, who does not speak Chinese who has difficulty you know just to remembering um, all those uh, fingering um, symbols. Um, so I, I developed a series of uh, Guqin attitude, uh, Guqin um, attitude. And um, so each one, you know, uh, just focusing on one fingering. Uh, so basically, um, yeah, it's a, it's a published book, um, just called Guqin At attitude. So, um, so I have the um, the the staff notation and then the jian uh, zipu notation. So the purpose is, uh, you know, after one attitude, the student would automatically, you know, remember that symbol, and uh, uh, for each uh, for each attitude, it you know I try to um, provide all po possibilities, all potential all variations of that specific fingering you know how it it can be combined with other fingerings and uh you know on different position of the string and also on different strings so i try to cover all the possibilities for that specific fingering in each attitude so that the student after uh, you know <coughs> practicing the, that specific attitude um the can memorize the symbol not only memorize the symbol visually, but also memorize the sound because it's very important to also know how to how to pronounce that. Um, for example, even for someone who does not speak Chinese, I ask them to be able to recognize the sound. For example, sang uh, gou yi. So they have to um, know that what that means, sang gou yi. So, so during their uh, future learning, I can give them, you know, voice instruction uh, during practice or you know during the learning. So that's the first step. Um, the second uh, second point that you know I highlight in my teaching is to try to uh, train the student uh, to you know, formulate some kind of note position correspondence. Okay. That is, uh, for each attitude, not only just to learn the specific technique of a fingering, like how to do go, how to do tiao, how to do so, how to do lunzhi, but also <coughs> um, strengthen the note position correspondence. Uh, for example, uh, you know, on the uh, like on a specific tuning and playing a specific key and a specific mode, uh, whether the um, the note in the in the, in the in the scale is on qi hui liu fen or qi hui jiu fen uh, on a specific string uh, seven point six or seven point nine. Um, a lot of students, you know, they just uh, Look at the score. Look at the jian zipu notation, and learn a specific piece. But uh, you know, when they start learning a new piece, um, they just uh, you know focus on the specific notation without formulating any um, kind of a um, you know mastery of the principle. Uh, so to to. To um, help students to um, to form that note position correspondence, I think is very helpful. Learning a specific piece, you know, after you learn a specific piece, um, 
the stuff you learn during that piece is going to be applicable for future learning as well. So, for example, on the Zheng Diao Zhong Lü Jun, and um, you you play uh, the Zhong Lü Diao, um, you know you know that on the first screen, um, the note in the pentatonic scale. Um, on the first screen, it's 7.9, second screen, 7.6, third string, 7.9, and a fourth, fifth string, 7.6, sixth string, 7.9, and, uh, you know, seventh string, 7.6. So that, um, so I specifically ask a student to, to memorize that, to know that, uh, so that you know if a, um, you know, if a 7.9 appeared on the fourth string, you know, there is a flat, uh, you know, there is a kind of a change of key or change of mode. So I think formulating that kind of correspondence is, is very helpful. And it, it also makes the learning um, very efficient. Um, and of course, the should um, <coughs> master those, you know, where, um, you know, when most of the notes are on the 10th way, they need to know which string has the 10.8. When most of the notes are on the ninth way, they need to know which string has the eight point eight and a half. Uh, so that is also uh, very helpful. And um, so they, they get prepared when they got to the fifth string. So they know it is 7.8 and then the other strings are on the ninth way. So that kind of a, um, I think, Note position correspondence will help students to um, have a structure to recognize, uh, you know, not only uh, faster in learning all the, those those fingerings and and the positions, but also be able to recognize when there is a change of when there is a change of uh, mode when there is a change of key happening uh, in the music. So that's that's uh, um, the second second emphasis I make during my teaching. <coughs> A third emphasis is the uh, fingering efficiency. Uh, fingering efficiency has some principles, so I, um, I I'm just going to uh, <coughs> list a few of them. For example, uh, one principle is the uh, in and out uh, alternate alternating finger that is uh, in most of the cases you know there are ex uh, exceptions but for an efficient fingering playing um, you should alternate uh, the in and out right so we know that you know this is the in um, you know the more go and and da and also to those are in when your fingering is changing a palm into a fist, that's called the yin fingering, ru uh, xuan. When you go out, uh, tiao, qi, uh, jai, pi, those are called out. <coughs> so an efficient fingering arrangement should be alternating um, yin and out. So you, one note, you play an yin fingering, and then the next note should be out. So next one should be in again because when you out you are already prepared for the in. So that is efficient fingering. Um, if you do not do that, um, there is, is a, uh, there is some unnecessary movement. For example, if you continue go, so you need to go and then raise your finger, and that raising movement is a waste of energy. Uh, and because you know it doesn't do anything, it doesn't play, produce any sound. So you, you, that kind of fingering is 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 not very efficient. So a more efficient fingering should be in and out. So that when you out, you are already prepared for the in, and when you go do the in fingering, you are already prepared for the out. Um, so a lot of students, you know, for example, when they play the Ping Sha Luo Yan, they do all the Qiao um, on that string. Uh, you know. So that kind of thing, or um, uh, do a lot of, you know, uh, sequential tiao or sequential more 
and uh, that is that is not <coughs> practicing the, this principle in and out uh, alternating. And an efficient playing should be um, alternating the in and out. Um, so, um, so that when you do the previous fingering, you are already preparing for the, the best position for the next fingering. So that's the first one for fingering efficiency. The second, <coughs> second thing I emphasize is uh, called, I call it retaining fingers. That is, um, for example, um, again, you know, using Ping Sha Luo Yan. Um, so that part. So there's a Tiao uh, sixth, um, and uh, I will. Especially for the beginner, I will ask the students to retain their finger on the fourth string because, you know, the next go is on the fourth string. So when you do tiao liu and then tiao wu and then next is go si. So I call that a retaining finger. Um, if the student put their retaining finger on the, you know, on the on the fifth, then it is not as efficient because, and then you need to put your finger on the fourth. So um, retaining finger is is another um, you know technical point I emphasize. That is you know when you you have to be mindful about where your hand is located. Um, so when you do the tiao. You must know where your middle finger is put, which string on which string you put it, um, and you should be self-conscious about where you put it, put your hand, um, because the most efficient way is to put your middle finger when you do the tiao, put your middle finger on the next on the string of next go, so that next go you just raise your middle finger and do it um, <coughs> without making extra movement of your hand. Um, a third fingering efficiency point I emphasize is what I call the finger tip joint transition. That is, you use different part of your finger to make transition between strings. Um, for you know, for your thumb, you know, it's the uh, the joint and the tip. Uh, you um, again, Ping Sha Luo Yan has a lot of that. So you use your joint to press the seventh seventh string, and you use your tip to press the sixth string. So you don't need to move your hand. You just uh, alternate that. So that that um, transition make unbroken sound because you don't have to. So if you do not use the the tip and the joint transition, you have to move your hand, and during that movement, you have to um, you have to pause. Right. So. Uh, and of course, the, the ring finger is the same thing. You know, you use the, the joint and the tip to make transition. For example, here. So I basically I do not have to move my hand by pressing three strings. Um, so I get unbroken sound. Um, then you know the last point. I think I'm already almost almost. At the end of my timing, so yeah, um, five minutes. Okay, all right. Thank you. Um, and then you know, after students master all those principles, then I will teach them exceptions. So, um, so these principles were very important for you to be conscious about your um, your movement efficiency. But then there are always always uh, exceptions. And when you when you see the exceptions in the score, um, it often indicate some kind of special arrangement. So what I emphasize to my student, when you see something in the in the music score, in the Jian Zipu score, that is um, contra contradictory to what I teach you about the fingering efficiency, do not change the, the score follow the score because <clears throat> very often 
it is purposefully designed like that, and for a special uh, effect. Uh, for example, sometimes the fingering uh, seems not efficient, seems entangled, and those kind of a tangled uh, fingering often suggest some kind of tangled feeling, emotion, and maybe uh, the composer um, or you know whoever co come up with such a fingering was purposefully designing that fingering to to make make your fingering more um, expressive of that specific kind of tangled uh, emotion or tangled feeling. One example is, uh, for example, in Yi Gu Ren, uh, Yi Gu Ren in the beginning, there is a, there is a, there is some, there are some fingerings that is very um, illogical, very, very not logical, very um, kind of a, you know, you you might think, you know, I, I can come up with much better fingering, much smoother, but I always teach, taught, uh, tell my student just to follow the score. Uh, for example, this part. So there are um, so in this part, <coughs> it is totally not following the fingering efficiency. Uh, for example, it has the continuous go. And continuous go is, you know, if you continue continue go different string um, from the outer string to the inner string, it makes sense, you know. So it's very logical. But uh, the piece did a lot of, you know, go si, and then ask you to do go yi. So you might think, you know, why can't I do tiao si and then go yi, which, which would save a lot of movement, which would be much more efficient. So um, I do the tiao si and I return my finger on first string so that I'm po totally prepared for go. Um, that seems more efficient, more logical, but I, of course I would always ask my student to follow the score because because that part of the music is expressing uh, you know missing someone you know there's a lot of struggle um, in the feeling and so the fingering is also designed struggled uh, that make a lot of sense um, so um, those kind of a seemingly illogical fingering often suggest some special effect and it is uh, precisely uh, you know what make Guqin uh, playing interesting so on one hand there are principles there are um, rules you can learn on the other hand there are always exceptions and those except exceptions has something to do with the artistic expression uh, of the music I think that's Oh, that's what I want to share um, for today, and I think my time is, is almost. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, what with Bayo? Yes. <laughs> Should I comment right now or? Yes. Body. You can right comment now? right now. Yes. I don't have to wait. To no. The moderator usually speaks first before opening up to the general audience for questions. So Ming Mei. You start. Okay. I think it's a very well, a very good presentation, and it's focused actually on really teaching the students in the sense, technical sense, uh, a lot of like fingering efficiency, um, and like the John transition. Those are very very useful. I mean, of course, I I, I teach my students those things too, but I didn't organize it into some kind of fingering efficiency. So I think it's very well done. Um, especially I like your last conclusion is some illogical fingering they might be, it's just the composer's 
go to suggest some some kind of a special effect that matches with the piece. But um, I wonder whether you can find some because it's a very interesting conclusion. But Sui San, can you find some proof of that? That means uh, in in older tin books, can you find some proof that they really did this? Um, so that let's say the egret to 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 express the sense of struggling, and because they use a more difficult transition, the finger, finger transition. Uh, if you can find some ancient books, I mean, like old tin manuals, they mention something like this. It would be very interesting because it's now it's just a guess, right? It's just a guess on your part. Right. Yeah. Um... So if you can find some references, that's what I mean, in old, old tin manuals, that yeah. would be very interesting. Yeah, that's a great suggestion. I will look for it. Um, you know, as you said, so far, it, yes, it's my interpretation. Uh, it's, a, it's my guess. It's only guess. Um, because for myself, I, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. If I see some very awkward fingering, I change it. I change it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, because yeah. By, by the piano, the same, right? Because everybody's hand, right. I mean, what do you call it? The bone structure, everything is different. Because at the piano, they, they sometimes write what, what kind of uh, one, two, three, four fingering you, you play. But my hands are very small, so it doesn't fit me. It might sub fit someone who can play, you know, <laughs> a, a very big range, but I am not. So I really change it. I, I don't I don't hesitate to change. Yeah. Because I think it's just better. It, it's just my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, you know, <clears throat> to be honest, I also sometimes change. Um, I only ask the student to not change because I think that fingering does produce uh, a, a specific effect that works very well with the, um, the mood of the piece, you know, like that part of the Yi Gu Ren. I mm -hmm. think that kind of a um, complexity added or the, the broken, the sudden stop uh, made by the um, uh, illogical fingering work very well because it's it's like something you know you you toss and turn in the bed and and uh, suddenly you know you you make those kind of uh, awkward movement right so um so when i recognize there's some good thing in those awkward fingering i usually do not change because i think it is it is it is useful on purpose. they did it, it on purpose yeah it is acceptable and it worked well with this um but when when i think you know Okay, we have a lot, a lot of those tangled fingering already, and the next for the next section, um, all the thing, all the the music is very uh, melodic. Uh, it's very, it's like a singing. It's very smooth, and when in that part there's some awkward fingering, then I will change because I think it's it's not working with the whole mood of that section. Um, you know, which I think should be smooth to make a good contrast with the previous hesitation and that sound. So I, I do change as well. And I think it's a, it's a very good suggestion to find good, uh, to find some document, like from the old, um, old, old book, if we, we can find, you know, maybe not exactly like what I said, but if there is something talking about the, you know, the, the fingering, um, the expression, uh, expression uh, that would be helpful. You know, one thing. You know, I, I really, I, I think there is a good potential to find something like that. Because that would be very if, interesting. They did that on purpose to talk. If I may interject, uh, Shui Shen, such essays exist. If you look in Si Lu Tang Qin Tong, you will find it in the Nei Bian. That's exactly what it talks about. Okay. Do you remember what it says? Hmm? Oh, exactly. Basically, the things like uh, what Shui Chan is saying. So, for example, uh, how do you um, put the rhythm out for a sore or uh, uh, what is it? Da uh, Jian Gou or stuff like that? What strings are actually involved in Da Jian Gou? How do you syncopate uh, rhythms that uh, you see a long line for? Things like that. Or how to bar the uh, numerous strings together? These are all put together, like uh, having an in and out. These are all considered like basic knowledge, but at the same time, they are in traditional manuscripts all crammed together, 
as like this, here's a word of advice kind of an essay going, whereas Shreishan is proposing something of, uh, divide them up into lessons and then apply them to a bunch of etudes that he's devised, which segues into my next question. So um, Shreishan has actually written and published a book strictly with, uh, well, practicing these in strictly technical exercises. Whereas in my book, I don't do that. I uh, integrate these into uh, learning as you go, as you learn different pieces. So when it applies to performance pieces. So my question is, um, is such an explicit need for a training exercise needed uh, as contrasted to learning pieces and then learn by immersion as you go along? There, is, there, are, there are benefits for, uh, for both. I, I, um, I'm totally not against like, just teaching pieces and to solve problems within each piece. And then I think there is a good benefit in that approach because the students are learning technique, techniques, but they are also learning the technique in context, in the traditional um, musical context. And I think there's this very... Um, uh, it, it, it has a great benefit. Um, on the other hand, I think there are also benefits for, for attitude. Um, I think, you know, uh, uh, Juni's method is very good for, I think, for you know, really smart, talented students. I think that your method is very good. But I, um, I often encounter students who, who have a difficulty learning that approach. Mm -hmm. And we need you to, like, uh, dissect, dissect those, those um, techniques. You know? Sight read, you mean? Uh, Sight reading? No, I mean, you need to, you need to divide one fingering into smaller technical... Ah, uh, break them down. Break them down, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think Peyo said we should move on. Yeah. You, so, the next two time we can continue. <laughs> Yeah, it also kind of um, makes them focusing on one thing, and it's easier. Mm -hmm. I'll make a quick uh, closing statement on uh, your presentation. I think that your idea is great for one more application, and that's to write a notebook for uh, prospective Guqin composers and adapters. If they're looking to create a piece uh, and written to uh, compose or adapt for the Guqin, they should abide by these rules that we have been playing along for so long. And it, I think it's important to make these rules explicit for those who need to reference this in a, in a quick run, in a hurry. Okay, thank you very much.